Asus built the Rogue Rapture GTAX 11000 Wi-Fi 6 router with gamers in mind. And according to Asus, the GTAX 11000 Wi-Fi 6 router delivers unparalleled performance and coverage. And it cost $399 at the time of this review. So in this review, we will do a Wi-Fi speed, coverage and some performance test. So please sit back, relax and enjoy the review. First, let's do a quick unboxing and see its contents. The unit came with some quick start guides, Asus Rogue Wi-Fi 6 router, power adapter and an Ethernet cable. Now let's look at the specs. The Asus Wi-Fi 6 router is powered by a 64-bit quad-core CPU running at 1.8 GHz, 256 MB flash, 1 GB RAM. It supports AX11000 tri-band Wi-Fi 6 802.11ax standard, OFDMA, beam forming, MU-MIMO, 1024QAM, 8 external antennas, 160 MHz bandwidth, DFS bands, and also supports AI mesh. In the connection options, router has four 1 gig LAN ports. Port number one and two can be used for link aggregation and one gig WAN port for internet. A single 2.5 gig LAN port for local gaming, two USB 3.1 Gen 1 ports, and a power button. There are three buttons on the left side of the router that allows you to toggle Wi-Fi connection on and off, connect devices via VPS, and a boost key. And on the front of the router, you have status LED lights for all the connections. Let's talk about design and features. The ASUS Rogue Rapture GTAX 11000 resembles the last generation Wi-Fi 5 GTAC 5300. The overall body dimensions are huge, measuring 2.4 inch tall, 9.5 inch wide without antennas, and weighs 3.8 pounds. The router has a lot of ventilation on the top and bottom to keep the powerful hardware temperature under control. There's also a nice ASUS Aura RGB logo on the top, and you can change the colors of the LED to your liking. The ASUS GTAX 11000 Wi-Fi 6 router is configured for maximum performance and coverage up to 5,000 square feet. Router serves three wireless bands, including a single 2.4 GHz band with throughput up to 1148 megabits per second and two 5 GHz bands, each with a speed up to 4800 megabits per second. If you add these three bands together, you arrived at a combined throughput of over 10 gigabits per second. According to ASUS, it achieves unparalleled throughput with Wi-Fi 6 supports for clients yielding up to twice or more aggregate speed than a Wi-Fi 5 capable routers. That's perfect for many modern homes, even on the larger side of things. So this Wi-Fi system is looking great for families, small offices or apartments. So it's a great system for multi-story houses. The ASUS Rogue Wi-Fi 6 router supports OFDMA and MU-MIMO technology, lets your router communicate more data to more devices at the same time. The Wi-Fi traffic is managed much more efficiently since data is transmitted from different devices at the same time, rather than having each device data waits for its turn. This results in an efficient use of airtime, reduced latency, and increased bandwidth to add more devices to your network, which means you can connect more devices than ever before. It increased Wi-Fi data rates up to 60% to enjoy lag-free online gaming and even 8K streaming. ASUS designed the Wi-Fi 6 router setup to be very easy. It's a three-step process. All you have to do is download the ASUS router app to your Android or iOS device. Connect your router to your modem, or if you have FIOS with Ethernet connection, you can connect router's WAN port directly to the Ethernet cable. You don't need modem for this. Then just follow the instructions in the app to complete the setup. Or you can set up using your web browser. The web setup has a very clean interface and tons of options to choose. So we are going to go over the settings very quickly to see what are the available options. On the main screen, we have mesh information, internet information, wireless settings with router information and number of connected devices, network traffic information, network ping information, and ASUS Aura RGB settings to choose from. Then continue down the left column, there's a AR protection settings, allow you to set up network protection and parental controls. Then under the game acceleration option, you can set up QoS and WT fast settings. Then down the list, you have open NAT, game radar, Wi-Fi radar, VPN settings, and traffic analyzer. Then under advanced settings, you have network map with internet connection information, number of connected clients, then also information about wireless channels and router CPU or RAM status information. Moving on to wireless settings, here you can set up wireless settings for all three bands. Either you can combine them in a single SSID or keep them separate. Here you can also set up WPS, WDS, wireless MAC filter, radius settings and more. 
you can also set up guest network, set up local LAN settings. Then under WAN settings, you can set up internet connection settings, dual WAN settings, port trigger, virtual server, port forwarding, DMZ, DDNS, and NAT settings. Then under USB application settings, you have a lot more options to choose from and configure USB attached devices and network share storage and more. Followed by that, you have an AI Cloud 2 settings. It allows you to connect to your data wherever and whenever you have internet connection and links your home network and online storage. ASUS Rogue Rapture also supports Alexa and IFTTT devices. There are options for IPv6, firewall, administration settings, system logs, and some network tools. But you don't have to set up all these settings if you're not a power user. You can leave everything to default, or you can use ASUS app to complete the whole process quite fast. Now let's do some performance coverage and speed test. So we placed ASUS GT AX11000 Wi-Fi 6 router in the basement storage room. It has concrete walls around it, and it is in the lowest part of the house. For this test, we are using Intel's AX200 Wi-Fi 6 card installed in our laptop. So the total square footage of the house is 5000 square feet. I will be testing Wi-Fi connections in different corners and floors of the house to see how well ASUS Wi-Fi 6 router performs in terms of Wi-Fi speed and coverage. In this test, we will use Fast.com, which is powered by Netflix to perform internet speed test and also used iPerf3 performance test. So let's get started. Okay, so here as you can see on the screen, we have three Wi-Fi bands all set up separately. 2.4 GHz band is called Batman, 5 GHz-1 band is called Superman, and 5 GHz-2 band is called Wonder Woman. Both 5 GHz channels are set to 160 MHz bandwidth with DFS channels. Few things I want to mention here that 160 MHz channel on 5 GHz-2 band does not work under auto channel configuration, but it works fine for 5 GHz-1 band. In order to make 5 GHz-2 band to work with 160 MHz, you have to select the 160 MHz channel bandwidth option manually and select the control channel to any of the available channels range from 100 to 128. For this test, I have 128 channels selected. So this is very critical because I spent hours and hours to figure this out and I hope ASUS will fix this problem in the future firmware update. And for the reference, I'm using firmware 3.0.04.384 underscore 7979. I have one gig Verizon Fios connection. And for the first test, I have connected 2019 MacBook Pro to the router by Ethernet cable and we're getting close to one gig internet speed, confirming router can handle one gig internet speed as advertised. The MacBook Pro is also configured as iPerf3 server. We will use our Intel AX200 Wi-Fi 6 laptop as an iPerf3 client to perform Wi-Fi coverage and speed test. If you're not familiar with iPerf, here's a quick information. iPerf3 is a tool for active measurement of the maximum achievable bandwidth on IP networks. So for the first Wi-Fi speed test, I'm standing 5 feet away from the Wi-Fi 6 router. And as you can see on the screen, we have full 2.4 gigabits per second Wi-Fi connection and Wi-Fi 6 card on the laptop is set to 802.11ax standard. We're going to use fast.com internet speed test, which is powered by Netflix. And as you can see on the screen, we are able to get 600 megabits per second wireless speed. And standing at the same spot, let's test the iPerf 3 speed test as well. Here, as you can see on the screen, we're getting good iPerf speed results. Now for the second test, I'm standing 30 feet away from the Wi-Fi 6 router in the basement with a couple of walls between the Wi-Fi router and the laptop. I have so far good Wi-Fi connection and using fast.com internet speed test we are still getting 530 megabits per second wireless speed and for iPerf3 test we are getting 368 megabits per second wireless speed. Now let's move from the basement to the main floor of the house and do a third Wi-Fi speed and connection test. I have so far good Wi-Fi connection and using fast.com internet speed test we are still getting 590 megabits per second wireless speed. And for iPerf3 test, we are getting 323 megabits per second wireless speed. Now I moved to the far left side of the house and close to 60 feet from the Wi-Fi 6 router with a floor and few walls in between the router and laptop. I have so far good Wi-Fi connection and using internet speed test, we are still getting 390 megabits per second wireless speed. And for iPerf3 test, we are getting 191 megabits per second wireless speed. Now let's move to the far right side of the house and close to 30 feet from the Wi-Fi 6 router with the floor and few walls in between the router and laptop. Here we have good Wi-Fi signals and good Wi-Fi connection. And using internet speed test, we are still getting 570 megabits per second wireless speed. And for iPerf3 test, we are getting 324 megabits per second wireless speed. 
Now let's move to the second floor of the house. Here we have two floors and few walls between the Wi-Fi 6 router and laptop. Here we still have good Wi-Fi signal strength and have so far good Wi-Fi connection. And using internet speed test we are still getting 550 megabits per second wireless speed. And for the iPerf 3 test we are getting an average of 345 megabits per second wireless speed. Now we are going to do a Wi-Fi 6 file transfer speed test. In this test we have Intel AX200 Wi-Fi 6 network card installed in our desktop. It is close to 15 feet away from the Wi-Fi 6 router. In the first test we are connected to 5 GHz dash 1 channel named Superman. We are connected at full 2.4 gigabits per second speed. You can see the channel settings on the router page on the left. And on the right hand side we have set our Wi-Fi 6 card to 802.11ax mode only. So it will only connect to Wi-Fi 6 band. Now we are going to transfer close to 6 GB file over Wi-Fi. Let's run the test. In the test we are getting an average of 113 megabytes per second transfer speed which is basically a full 1 gig network card speed on the NAS. Now for the second test we are going to connect to 5 gigahertz dash 2 band called Wonder Woman. We are connected at full 2.4 gigabits per second speed. Let's transfer the same 6 GB file again. We have the same average of 113 megabytes per second transfer speed. So full 1 gig transfer speed again. Now we are going to switch the Wi-Fi 6 card settings to 802.11ac standard and do the same 6 GB file transfer test. Now you can see we are still getting full 1 gig transfer speed of the network card on the NAS. Now we are going to switch the Wi-Fi 6 card settings to 2.4 GHz channel and do the final 6 GB wireless speed test. Now you can see we are still getting good transfer speed. Overall, ASUS ROGUE Rapture GT AX11000 Wi-Fi 6 router did perform very well in this review. The AX11000 Wi-Fi 6 router delivers good Wi-Fi coverage, excellent Wi-Fi speeds, and will not have problem covering 5000 square feet. ASUS has definitely listened to the customers and fixed the firmware issues of 5 GHz not being able to run with 160 MHz bandwidth. And it also improved Wi-Fi speed as well. On that basis, I have no problem recommending ASUS ROGUE Rapture AX11000 Wi-Fi 6 router to anyone who is in the market for Wi-Fi 6 router. Let me know what you guys think of ASUS ROGUE Rapture Wi-Fi 6 router in the comments below. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon for notifications for future videos. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.